Today, it's time for a bit more discussion on the Fat Shark who are owned by Red Cat release a digital FPV system called the Dominator, which apparently looks an awful lot like the DJI digital FPV system, but is not based on or made by DJI. However, it is identical to a system by Walksnail called the Avatar, who are apparently actually Cadex FPV, who are again also not DJI, but apparently have worked with DJI in the past on systems such as the Cadex Vista, and appear to be making this new system that looks an awful lot like DJI, but isn't DJI after all. And what we're going to do today is try and figure out who is actually sleeping with who in this DJI Cadex Walk Snail Red Cat FPV love triangle and work out whose baby is it anyway. Derek, you are the father. <laughs> Now, over the last 24 hours, I have had so many people reach out to me, it is crazy. I've had on the record, off the record, up the record, down the record. I've had the record shoved every possible way it could be. And whilst I'm not going to be talking about conversations I've specifically had, I'm going to also give you guys a bit of an update on where I'm leaning on this now. And whilst yesterday, things were very much pointing at this being DJI based, today things are looking less so, and this is really looking more like a sort of new copy stroke clone of the DJI system, as has been alluded to via Red Cat, Fat Shark, Cadex, everybody else in existence. So what we'll do first of all is take a look at what is actually going on with the VTX. And then at the end, I'm going to give you some of my thoughts. So if we go on the Walk Snail website, we can see some images of what appears to be the VTX. And this aligns with what we've seen from Fat Shark being used with the Dominator system. We can see that it is a single board unit. We've got dual antennas like we've seen on DJI in the past. And we've got the cameras, which again, look similar. If we scroll down, there is a larger image of the VTX. And if I bring that up, you can see that it is a single board unit. We've got two UFLs for the antenna, and then there appears to be a MIPI going that way, but there doesn't appear to be much other info than that. However, there has been an image put online of this, of the actual VTX in someone's hand that shows us a little bit more. For instance, you can see that it does say Avatar VTX or TX on it. It's got the camera with walk snail labeled, and you can see the MIPI connector going up over the top there down to the camera. Now, this image actually tells us quite a lot. We can see the top heat sink, which we couldn't see on this image. So if we look here or the bottom, whichever way you want to label it, this shows us one side, but that side isn't actually showing us anything else. Whereas now we can see both sides. And what is interesting is there is this heat sink, which was silver, appears to be have been painted black, but you've got this bump on the heatsink here, which is rather interesting. And this could explain how, if it's a similar system to DJI, they've been able to get the size down because they may have stacked the chipsets. We'll take a look at that a bit more in a second. If we then look, we also have the MIPI connector. This, I will be honest, looks almost identical to the DJI one. If you look, you can see it goes along, it goes in and down, again, being very similar down to the back of the camera, which again, looks very similar to a DJI one. What is also clear is the PCB on this, and this doesn't look like a PCB that's manufactured by DJI. It's green. And if we think about all of the PCBs we've had in the past for all of the FPV gear, and actually, all DJI gear all have a black solder mask. They are all very similar and very easy to identify as DJI, whereas this doesn't look it. It's green. You can see we've got the bound button here and we've got what looks to be maybe an SD card input here, although that doesn't align with the info we were given that it has an onboard storage rather than SD, but it does look like it. You can see the connector, but the VTX itself, whilst looking similar to the HD01, doesn't really look like one manufactured by DJI. Now, just to explain why that's the case, if I hop over to here, this website, if you don't know, is repair.wiki, and I've been uploading a load of info on there, not only on the DJI system, but on the HD0 system as well. For instance, if we go under it, under drones, you can see that there's info for all sorts of DJI drones, but I've been concentrating specifically on FPV. So there's info here for the DJI FPV EU, 
unit and the CADEX ear unit, and I've been putting stuff on here. But there is also info on here as well for HD0. If you haven't seen it, I've been uploading images of the boards on HD0 for the VRX, as well as boards for the VTX as well. Just putting it all in one place for users, as well as hints and tips on some of the things that may go wrong on these boards. Now, if we have a look at the DJI, what's interesting is both of their VTXs are a dual board setup. And there are some reasons for that because the DJI units have three parts. You basically have the video processing and camera input, you have RF and you have power. And that are the three parts of the system. And it doesn't matter if it is the main larger unit like we've got here or the Cadex Vista that we've got down here the similarities are all there. If we just quickly take a look at the DJI ear unit, because this has better pictures, if we put on one side of the board, this is the main video processing. We've got the DJI P1 ASIC. This is believed to be that custom ASIC, which is part of the OcuSync system. If you haven't seen, I've got a video on OcuSync where we talk about its history. It started off in lead core based off the shelf chipsets, and then it moved to this P1. Whilst it's not labeled DJI, we believe it's a a custom ASIC made from off-the-shelf IP blocks, which consists of ARM cores and various other cores, as well as the baseband for communicating with the system. There's then the SRAM at the side, which is the main chipset for the RAM for DJI. It needs that for buffering the image. And then the rest of this image is built up via the power control circuitry. So we've got voltage regulation and we've got system voltage regulation here for these chipsets. So you can see the whole one side of that board is taken up by the processing and the chipsets. If we move to the other side, we can see the back, we have more power. So up here we have an FET, which is the power input, the diodes for the inputs on the UARTs, as well as the power input. We've got a USB port. And then the rest of this is filtering for the SOCs on the other side, as well as a connector that goes to the other board and the bind button. But you can see the two boards the first board is taken up largely by video processing and some power circuitry. The second board is then taken up by the SD card on one side. And on the other side, we then have the RF side of things where you have the main baseband chip or the IF chip, which goes down to the power amplifiers and then out to the connectors. Now, whilst that's the main DJI ear unit, the setup is basically the same for the CADEX on the Vista. So again, black PCB, Notice the design of the PCBs on DJI, very much black, very identifiable with their solder mask as DJI, the way they manufacture them. But the setup is the same. You've got the P1 and the SRAM. You've got some power circuitry here. If we hop to the other side of that board, we've got the rest of the power circuitry as well as the filtering, the MIPI input. And then on the other board, we've got again, the IF or the RF transceiver or the baseband chip into the power amplifier. And then on the other side, it goes to the MIPI connector. And then we've got the rest of that power amplifier stuff here again with that FET located for the switching. So the DJI units are both split onto two boards. And that has been done to be able to get everything in place. But if we do look at this board, clearly everything has been able to be shifted onto one. If it is based on similar chipsets to DJI, perhaps they've made some changes and they've actually stacked things because this little lump here, as I've said, is very, very interesting. I think that's not a very large chipset. I think that's something stacked. Maybe they've taken the core chipset and the SRAM and placed it on top or the other way around to be able to shrink that down and then try to get everything on the same board. Remember, this does look bigger than a Vista's footprint, so it could have been possible that they've shrunk everything and moved it onto a single board setup rather than two. What we don't know, though, is what chipset is being used. And all of the noises that I've had at the moment is that this isn't DJI. And that is possible because DJI used to use off-the-shelf lead core chipsets, and it is possible if this is a clone, copied, new, reverse-engineered system that they are using off-the-shelf silicon rather than the custom ASIC that DJI are using. DJI moved to this P1 
because it is basically allowing them more leverage, more processing than they could get on the off-the-shelf chipset. But this is a few years old now. This chipset, though, is still used in all of their consumer drones today, including in the Mavic 3, in the RC Pro. So the P1 is not old technology. Don't think for one minute that DJI are going to just let this be sold out because it isn't. It is currently their current high-end chipset. In fact, they are still using it in everything today, as I've already mentioned. Whilst we don't know if it's in the new Mini 3, I would be astonished if it isn't. One last thing I just want to mention is on the cameras, as I did say yesterday, they do look almost identical to what we've had from Cadex before for DJI. That looks like the Cadex Micro. We all know what these look like. Makes you wonder a little bit, but that's nothing particularly unusual. It wouldn't be a surprise to see that these cameras were the same ones they were using. They've just made them compatible with the VTX. Okay, now the real question is where are we at now with regards to this system and is there any more official news? And in some ways, yes, there is, but it's all dependent on really what you want to believe. As I've said, I've had a massive amount of conversations in the background and many of these, whilst started to lean it towards being DJI based, have now really pushed it the other way, telling me that it is not it is something totally new. It is a sort of new system, copy, clone, inspired by, if you will, system that is designed to be a new entrant on the FPV market. Now, Walksnail also have a Facebook page where, frankly, they've been getting a bit of a battering over the last 24 or so hours. But there has been some interesting posts put on there that are very matter of fact with regards to this system. So let me hop over. So we've got their Facebook page. Now, this doesn't really have a lot of info, but it certainly has a lot of posts from users asking questions. And to be fair, Walksnail have been responding to these questions and there's been a few very specific responses that I want to share with you. So if I bring up this one first of all, this is just a response that they've made to a post saying thanks for speaking up your opinions and they're just saying they want to bring something new to the hobby but nothing really specific there, just saying research and all of that lot. However, there are a few others that make things very much clearer. And this is one of them. So if we look at that, Avatar is a brand new system, different from all current systems on the market. It is brand new, no relationship with DJI. All the product features are specialized for FPV, Community Digital. Keep the following on our account. More information will be released soon. So they're saying there's no relationship with DJI, but they go one step further in their next reply to someone, which basically makes it abundantly clear, and that is here. DJI have never outputted any technology to any other FPV company. That's an interesting statement and backs up some stuff we already know. We don't have a single same chip or code are the same, our new system. By considering current pilots' user habits, they might feel uncomfortable, so not to use a totally different interface. Some settings, descriptions, etc., we use to be the same, but we can change it if you have better ideas. So, they are saying there in Chinglish, because it is a Chinese translation, DJ have never outputted any technology to any other FPV company. Now, we know CADEX distribute the Vista, but it's always been understood and largely accepted that CADEX don't manufacture it and that backs that up. They are simply selling it out the door. Then we don't have a single same chip or code are the same at our new system. So they're talking about DJI. That can only mean they are saying their code and their chip, whatever ASIC they're using or off the shelf silicon is not the same as DJI. So where does this leave us? Well, okay, if CADEX weren't involved here, I myself and probably most people would have easily have accepted that this was just a copy, clone, new, inspired by system. However, because we had this walk, snail and CADEX mix 
we all sort of instantly went, looks like DJI, smells like DJI, it must be DJI. But what I can say is this, and all of the information I've been given, what they're saying on the website is pointing that it is not DJI based. We don't know for sure though, but they are saying it is not the same ASIC, which is the P1, and it is not DJI code. Fat Shark are telling us it's not DJI based. So whilst we all might want to sit here and say, but, but look at it, look at it, look at it. The reality is this system may simply be designed as a complete clone of the DJI FPV system. I have seen this before over in China when manufacturers want to get in on an industry and what they literally do is take the market leading product and replicate it piece for piece, literally. It's functionality, it's behavior, identically, almost in every way. Not necessarily the hardware, not necessarily the software exactly, but how it looks to the user. And whilst that might seem crazy to us, it is something we've seen time and time again in not just the FPV industry, but it's in the drone industry, in many other industries that when they copy something, they basically look to replace it. Why are fake Rolexes looking like a fake Rolex? Why are systems designed to replicate others? There is logic in doing it. So I can't tell you for sure, but the evidence right now that I'm leaning with is that it isn't DJI based. It is some new copy clone system. That's the word or inspired by. I'm not going to say, we've got to be careful with the word copy and clone. Okay. They've clearly copied, cloned the UI overall feel, but that doesn't mean that the system itself is actually copy cloned of DJI. We've seen footage that shows it appears to be a system that behaves very similar to DJI, but it isn't final yet. And there may be very big differences in the way it feels. There is some stuff in the review videos you actually pick up on. If you listen, there are some comments that you sort of could say, well, actually, perhaps this is just another heavily compressed system that's always going to behave like DJI because DJI is a two-way link with compression. This appears to be a two-way link with compression. So as a result of having that, you're always going to have similar behavior. You know, every car drives on a road, it rolls forward, it rolls back. That's inherent behavior. So just because it looks, feels, and smells so much like DJI, it doesn't actually mean it is. And until we really get our hands on it and understand it, we won't know for sure. Now, there is one last thing I just want to talk about, and that is the pre-order situation. I haven't done that yet because I wanted just to let the dust settle for a few days. I really do want to talk about this system. However, I object to any manufacturer taking large amounts of money on pre-order for a system that is not finished. What I'm about to say is not specifically directed at Fat Shark in a nasty way. However, I don't feel it is right for them to take pre-orders from users on a system that they have shown is not finished. If they had shown a completed product and said, look, it's going to manufacture, it's going to be out in six weeks, it's all done and ready to go, that's fantastic. However, what they have shown is clearly not ready and they only have five, six, seven weeks to get this right. So I don't feel it is appropriate for me to put down large amounts of money on something that may not work properly on day one. We all hope that it does, but let's be realistic here. Some of the issues that they were showing in that video are not tidying up issues. There was DVR problems. There was the behavior in 1080p. There was the issues around um, the OSD, the UI. Some of that is basic stuff, but the OSD behavior and stuff like that, that's back-end functionality that can take a lot of work. And we've already seen from the hacking community on the DJI side of things, how difficult that is. We've had the root exploit for DJI for some time now, yet 
the working on the OSD, canvas mode, beta flight OSD, is still in progress because it's not easy. Doing this stuff takes time. So I'm personally not going to recommend anyone pre-orders this right now, simply because unless you are 100% happy on the fact that you may not get a fully working system on day one, I can't with good conscience recommend anyone puts money down to something they haven't seen for themselves yet. If we get a video in three weeks time where they're saying the reviewers all say, you know what, it's working, it's absolutely fine. They show it flying out at range. They show it flying out around buildings, behind fencing, behind some trees in a non-manufacturer controlled environment, then I'll be okay with that. However, today I am going to say buyer beware and take caution because things aren't necessarily all that we would hope they would be at this moment in time. So that's it from me. Please do let me know what you think in the comments. Stay safe. I will speak to you guys again soon.